All right, y'all, it's time for me to drop some more knowledge on you. Today, the Bearded Wonder explains, dun dun dun, dun federalism. So, we're talking about these different groups of people, checks and balances, things that kind of limit the power of the government. Um, and the reality was in 1787 that when the states created the United States, if you were a person, you were both a citizen of a state and of the United States. And the question of federalism is really, which one are you more a citizen of? They, they both make laws, and sometimes they might even make laws that contradict each other. So which one do you follow? In today's government, that's pretty simple. Uh, most of us are just kind of used to the national government being the one. We don't even really say, oh, I'm a South Carolinian. Uh, I mean, you might, but for the most part, people consider themselves to be a citizens of the United States more so than of their actual state. Uh, but that was not how the country was created. And so to understand that, we need to understand federalism. And to do that, we're going to use an example. We're going to use an example of the tariff of 1832. This is about 50 years after the country was created. So you've got two groups, the North and the South, and in the North they mainly do manufacturing. That means they take raw materials and turn them into stuff that people buy and use in their house. In the South, um, people mainly grew crops. Cotton uh, by 1832 was becoming a pretty big deal. Um, and so let's say that you live in the South and you want to look fabulous and have a fashion show. So you're going to buy yourself some fancy clothes which means you need a factory to make it. And the reality was, in 1832, it was cheaper to get it from England than it was to get it from the factories in the north. Well, that's going to be a problem for the people who are trying to run factories in the north. And so their solution is to make a law in the national government called a tariff. Now, the tariff is basically a tax on everything that comes into the country. Well, that works out really well for the people in the north because there's more of them there, which means that they can make the law, and as long as the president signs it, and he did in 1832, it becomes a law, game over for the south. So now there is a law that makes it five extra dollars to bring in cloth from England. Seven plus five is 12. 12 is greater than 10. We buy it from the north. That's good. The problem is, if you're in the South, that's not good, because your stuff just got a whole lot more expensive, and there's not really, in your viewpoint, a good reason for it. So, a guy named John C. Calhoun, a senator, he was actually the vice president at the time, um, said that South Carolina cancels that law. We call it nullifies. He basically said, South Carolina can make its own rules, and it can cancel the laws. Well, that's good if you live in South Carolina because now your stuff went from $12 to $7 um, and that's the end of that conversation. People in the North started saying, wait a second, if, if any state can cancel any law they want, then what's the point in even having a national government? John Calhoun and others argued, well, of course we have that right, the 10th Amendment, which says that anything not given to the federal government um, is reserved to the states. That means that the government, the federal or the national government, cannot make laws except what is listed in the Constitution. And that's what the Tenth Amendment says, which is what it says. The national government and people in the North said, well, wait, no, that's not how it works. When people voted and made, you know, the government, the government has a power. One of them is to kind of manage the economy. Tariffs are a part of that. And so even though tariffs aren't specifically mentioned in the Constitution, we can do it anyway. These two views of how these like uh, forces balance each other give us our three kind of views of federalism. The first one is the nationalist view. This is the one that becomes dominant, especially after uh, the war between the states, so after 1865. This is the one that we're used to because we've been doing it this way for about 150 years. In this view, the states really kind of only exist because the government lets them exist. They're helpful to kind of, um, you know, organize certain things for the government, but that's pretty much what they do. Okay, you can make your own speed limits, but only because the national government can't be bothered to come up with um, 
an actual speed limit for every state. So, you know, you know, you can do whatever you want as long as we decide to let you. In the time of the government, there were actually, uh, or the creation of the government, there were two other views of federalism. One of them is the moderate view, which basically saw both powers as being legitimate. They said, listen, when the national government and the state governments fight over power, that's okay. As a matter of fact, we made it to do that, and we're okay with it doing that. And as long as people are fighting, that's another check and a balance, and it keeps the people uh, ultimately in charge, and that's a good thing. Finally, there was the group that we call the nullifiers. That's John C. Calhoun. Uh, another name for it is states' rights. And they basically said that the only reason why the national government exists is because the states decided to make it. After all, representatives from all 13 states went to the Constitutional Convention. They made it. And then after the Constitution was written, they had to vote on it before it even existed. Um, and so their viewpoint was, listen, state laws are actually more important than the national government. And if we want to cancel it, we can. And you just need to stay in that very narrow little sandbox that we made for you when we wrote the Constitution. And so that's the concept of federalism. What I want you to get from it is, is that basically the idea was that there would be checks and balances. These two groups here both see uh, balances. The, uh, honestly, the moderates probably the most because they wanted both uh, the states and the national government to fight over power. Most, For the most part, that's not what we experience today. It would be more this view. Um, but it's definitely possible, um, you know, theoretically, if we're talking about federalism and understanding it, it probably was meant to be this view when the people made our country, uh, the framers, they, they basically wanted those national and those state governments to fight against each other. Again, anytime somebody's fighting over power and the people are kept out of it, that lets the people keep their freedom. And that's mainly what the country was all about. So this concludes our three video series on uh, sort of limitations or checks and balances within the government. I hope you have a good day.